this is the Magic Mirror project that I've been working on for a while. In the top, we have the news, which is by New York Times. So it just pulls the news from the internet using a URL. Second module we have is an alarm module. You can set an alarm for any time you want using the voice recognition speech. Then we have the current weather module, which shows the current weather in the city that I'm in. Also shows the chance of precipitation. The um, time the sun's gonna rise, sun's gonna set, what it feels like in the wind. And then we have the forecast, which shows the high and the low, what the chance of precipitation or the sun is gonna look like, and then the chance of precipitation right here. Moving a little further down, we got the time right here. It's a military time, along with the date and the day of the week. Um, then we have my personalized calendar. I don't have any events planned right now, so it shows no upcoming events, but that's that. Then we have the user profile's name right here, flashes on and off. We have a profile picture of the user. And lastly, we have the Spotify account for the user right here. So this is what the full Magic Mirror looks like in its glory. So let's explain how it works and the code behind it. So first off, we have this motion sensor at the bottom. So once the motion sensor detects a user, it will then trigger the facial recognition module to start running its code. And the reason it's designed like this is because if the facial recognition code is running constantly, it draws a lot of current, which takes a lot of power from the wall. So in order to save power, we decided to have this motion sensor module installed in. So the facial recognition code is not running 24 seven. So up at the top right here, we have this camera module, which just pokes out a little hole right here. So once a motion sensor detects a user in front of the mirror, we start running the facial recognition module. And what this does is if a user is identified or if the user is set in the code, it identifies who the user is and then displays their personalized modules up at the bottom. But if the camera does not detect anybody there or it detects a person who's not registered in the code, it just displays the basic modules right here, like the weather, the news, and the time. But if a user is identified, it displays their public profile, their name, their calendar, and their Spotify. So this is how the mirror looks and how the mirror operates. Now let's talk about how the code works in more detail. So let's go over the code and all its glory. So first off, we're gonna start off with the PIR sensor. So this is the code, it's called main.py in the pi. And we get, we import these libraries right here. We declare what serial port the Arduino Uno is connected to in the baud rate and then the initial state of the PIR sensor. So if there is serial data, then we start running the commands. So look right here. So um, while this is true, so this loop just uh, loops over and over and over again. So line is going to equal the serial data. We're just gonna strip it right from the Arduino. And then if it equals one, so if the PRR sensor detects something, it sends a one out. If it detects someone and a button is pressed, it sends a two out. And if it detects nothing, it sends a zero out. So if if the um, serial monitor collects a one, we start running the, uh, the facial recognition program. If it detects a two, so if a, the button is pressed also, we run the speech to text program in order to control the alarm. But this one still, under development because it's a little glitchy. So if it detects neither a one or a two, it prints out a zero. So we're gonna send a zero to the um, shared file between the magic mirror and the Python script. So if it sends a one, how do we communicate with magic mirror that we've sent a one? So there's a shared file called data.json and that's why we have the um, the JSON library up right here in order for it to access it. And in this file is just a single integer. And this integer communicates with the Python face recognition code and the magic mirror JavaScript code about what face is detected and then what it should do. Since you can't copy and paste Python and 
paste it into a JavaScript folder. Um, yeah, then the program's gonna sleep once a second, so it's not constantly running. And that's pretty much it. So the facial recognition code. So this code I talked about before in a previous video. I'll go through it briefly. Um, very good video on YouTube about how to download this and how this stuff works. So I'm just gonna go over it. So this is the scalar factor. So you can even make the camera have higher resolution or lower resolution, improves the frame rate. Four is a pretty good number. So these are the authorized names. So if the facial recognition code um, detects a face with one of these names attached to it, it's gonna um, allow stuff to happen. And you gotta train the model before this using other codes, which is pretty easy to train. But I'm not gonna go into a detail right here. Go look at the other video about it. So all the train um, faces are in something called encoding.pickle. So we're just getting those faces right here. And then we start running the Pi camera. Then we start collecting frames and processing the frames. And then if we detect a frame, we make user equal to, user equal three, or user equal four, depending on whose name it is. And then we send that data to the shared JSON file right here. And then once we detect the frame, we sleep for 60 seconds because I don't want to constantly keep changing faces and um, stuff if there's more than one people in the frame. So we just let it sleep for 60 seconds. All of this is um, pretty much classifying how we want this, it to scale up or scale down with the scalar function. Um, the, this determines frame rate right here. And then this is, so if the main code right here um, says run facial recognition, it runs it. So this is how we can run the Python code using another code. And the reason we need to do this is because Python on the Raspberry Pi, only one code can be running at a time that can collect serial data from the Arduino. So we need to combine both the facial recognition and the speech to text code into one code in order for it to both collect the serial data. So this is all the Python codes that we have. Now let's look at the um, main JavaScript codes that we have. So first, let's go to config first. This is the most important code in all the Magic Mirror. Um, so we just set up some basic initializers in order to start it. And then we start the module. So the module is the most important section right here. This is how we determine what modules are gonna be in our mirror. So we have the alarm module right here, the weather, weather, um, the photo module, the notification, the clock, the calendar, and the compliments module. So this is how all of it runs. Spotify. Um, let's go take a look at some of the modules just so I can show you how it works. So all the modules are in the module folder, obviously. And we're gonna go with, just a basic one, we'll go with the alarm one. So. So this is the only one we're gonna get into. So this is the alarm one. So in the configs, you can kind of set a time you want to initialize it at and then what the message says. So we just have uh, 2,500 because this time does not exist. So the alarm will just never go off. And then it says wake up because that's most likely what you're gonna use it for. Um, this, so if it gets triggered, then we send the load alarm data and that's down here. Um, and this gets the alarm data, so where it's from, which I'll show you in a second. Actually, I can show you now. So the alarm data is in a folder in the Magic Mirror code, in the config code called voice.json. So this is where it gets the alarm code, and this is where the speech to text code sends the alarm time code, and this is where the alarm time module gets the code from. So this is all basic stuff. So if the alarm is triggered, uh, right here, you kind of barely see it, but so if the alarm gets triggered, we pretty much just play the sound in the um, in the alarm module folder. Which is in the sounds folder right here. So very basic. Um, the know that helper for the alarm 
this is how we get the alarm information from voice.json. So every module, and I'll show you another one after, the more complicated one, that uses the um, a shared data pathway has to have a node underscore helper.json file. You can name it wherever you want. That's why I name mine. And this is actually what extracts the information from the shared file and then shares it with the um, the main script code also in the file. So normal Magic Mirror setups, you'll have a complement module, which will give you a random complement depending on the time of the day. I did not want that, so I hijacked the complements module to act as a way to show and hide certain modules depending on whose face it sees. So it's node.helper file, which we'll go to real quick. This is it. So this extracts the data from data.json file, and then it sends it to um, the complements folder. So let's look at, take a look at this. So if it starts, if we call it in the config file, it's gonna start the code. And if we get, get face ID, which is that's what the node.helpers.json file sends. So every time it updates with a new number, it runs this code and this code pretty much um declares each module in the config file and you see so like if data.json equals a zero we hide all the modules if it equals one we show some of them but we hide others and then if it equals two and two is the first number that's an actual user we show only the user modules and then we hide the other modules and that's pretty much how it works um Yeah, that's pretty much just the code and how it works in all of its glory. There's a lot more into it. Um, I might share about it later, but this is the main meat and potatoes of the code. And then the way the mirror works is it uses a two-way mirror panel called mirror pane in the front. It is 50 inches diagonally long, and it allows light to pass through the back side of it while reflecting light from the front side of it. And then behind the mirror is a 32 inch TV, all the way tucked in the upper right hand corner, which allows data to be displayed on the TV just like this. The frame is made out of dark wood molding and it is glued on to the wooden frame using Gorilla Glue. So we Gorilla Glued it onto the frame. The frame has a little wooden lip that is screwed into it in order to catch the mirror and we have a little padding on the other side of the frame, so the mirror is resting on padding and not directly on the wood. So that's the end of the video. That's the end of how this mirror works. Um, thanks for watching.